What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use a particle system and some city 3D building assets to create a simple but effective cityscape flyover shot within a few minutes of opening up Blender. We will be using the Metropolitan Pack from our City Builder 3D asset-based add-on for Blender for our building assets, but the concepts used in this video can be used with any selection of 3D models. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender, and the first thing we are going to do here is delete everything in our scene. Now we will go to our render tab here and make sure that the cycles rendering engine here is selected. And now we're going to import a few city 3D assets in our scene here. So we will go ahead and open up the city builder 3D tab here on the right side. And as you can see, we have three different genres of buildings that we can choose from metropolitan, sci-fi, cyberpunk future, and derelict future. For this tutorial, we will go ahead and use the metropolitan pack here. But as I said before, feel free to append or import any 3D building models of your choice into your Blender scene for this step. Alright, so we will select the 3D cursor tool here and just choose a spot to the side of our scene here where we can just add our building assets out of the way of our main area. And then we'll just start adding a few of the larger metropolitan buildings here as well as a few medium and smaller sized buildings to get a larger selection. The more buildings we add, the more realistic the particle city is going to look because it will be harder to see the duplicated buildings. So we could even add some buildings from the sci-fi future pack here as well for some more variety. However, keep in mind that the more buildings you add, the more memory is required for your computer to deal with the scene effectively. Alright, so we have a few buildings in our scene here and they look a little bit messy right now, but don't worry, we aren't going to use them like this as we are going to distribute them on a plane using a particle system. So to do this, first we're going to select all of our building assets here, and then we will press M and add them to a new collection, and we will name the collection Buildings, and then press OK. And now the building assets are linked together so that we can use them more effectively. Alright, so now that we have our buildings here, let's add our plane to distribute them like a simple city setup in our scene here. So we will go ahead and press Shift A and add a plane here, and we will bring it to the center of our scene and scale the plane up a little bit so that it's a little bit bigger in our scene. Something like this should look pretty good. Now while this plane is selected, we will navigate to the Particle Properties tab here, and then press the plus button to add a new particle system. Then we will change the particle system style to hair for this tutorial. And there are a variety of settings we can change in this particle system, such as the number of particles here. But before we change anything, let's link our building assets to it so that we can see what we are getting so far. So to do this, let's go under the Render tab here and change our Render As option here to Collection. And then here under Instance Collection, we will choose our Buildings Collection that we created of our building assets earlier. And now as you can see, our building assets are distributed across our plane here, but we obviously have some adjustments to do. Right now these buildings are a little bit small, so we will adjust the scale setting here. We will go ahead and increase this to something like 0.18. And this is looking a little bit better, but the buildings are a little bit large right now. But before we adjust the main scale value again, I like to add some variation in the size of my buildings using the scale randomness option here. So let's go ahead and change this to something like 0.8. And now as you can see here, we are a little bit closer to something a little bit more realistic. We might even try something like 0.95. And this is looking even better, I would say, to introduce a little bit more randomness to our scene. We can also change the scale of individual buildings on the particle system by selecting the source building here and scaling it up or down as well. So we might change one of these a little bit since it's kind of large in our scene here. And as you can see, you might not use this small distribution of buildings in a wide shot, but we could use this for a closer rooftop flyover shot. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. First, we will select our particle plane here one more time and increase the number of particles from 1000 to 1200 for just a little bit more buildings. Something like this looks pretty good. And now let's go ahead and create a good environment with lighting for a render of our shot. First, let's select our particle plane one more time here. And one thing we want to do is make sure that the material for this plane is a little bit darker, as right now at default, it will bounce light from the bottom of our city as it is a whiter material. And this whiter material won't allow the most realistic lighting of our city. If we wanted to be even more realistic, we could use an image of roads in the city as the ground plane material instead but for these city flyover shots, it's not necessary unless we look straight down with the camera. So we will just go to the material tab here and create a new diffuse material for our plane and make the base color a little bit darker like this. Now we can continue to create the lighting for the scene. First, we will go to our world tab here. And for this tutorial, we will use a sky texture here. But if you want even more accurate and more realistic results, you could also use an environment HDRI of some sort. 
we will leave our strength at one and then just take a look at the preview of our environment here. Pretty much this sky is just going to provide some ambient lighting for our city to fill in the shadows more realistically. Okay, so to complete our lighting setup, let's go to our scene here and add a sun. So we will just press shift A and select the sun option. And now we will just position our sun to sidelight our city from one side to create some layers of light and dark. Something like this should look pretty good. And we will just go to our light panel here and increase the strength of the sun to 5. And then under the color option here we'll just warm it up a little bit to create a little bit more of a warm sunlight feel. Something like this. Alright so now that our lighting is set up let's go ahead and add a camera to our scene here. So we'll just press shift A and add a camera. And what we want to do is we want to position our camera so that the sun is backlighting our city to create some nice specularity on the rooftops. So we'll just go ahead and position the camera back here like this. And maybe we'll click on view, viewpoint camera. And now we can see through our camera lens here and place the camera in some framing that we like. And at this point, it's just a matter of moving your camera around to get a cool frame you like. So I'll just press G while the camera is selected to move the camera around and play a little bit with it until I find something with a good mix of foreground and background elements. Maybe somewhere deep in the city like this should look pretty good. And we can even animate our camera flying through our city if we wanted. But yeah, I'll do a quick tutorial on that in the future as well. But anyway, this angle looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and reposition our sun here so that we maintain a fairly direct backlight on our buildings toward our camera here, like this. Now let's do a little test render here. So I'll go ahead and go to our camera tab here and bring these samples down to 60. Then under the film tab here, we will check the transparent box so that we can render the sky background as an alpha channel so that we can add our own background in compositing. Under the layer tab here, we will also check the mist pass checkbox so that we can overlay some volumetric mist in compositing in order to create some more depth in the shot. And if you need to make any adjustments to that mist pass, you can do that under the world settings here with the mist pass settings, but I will leave it at default for now. And now we can just go up here and press render, render image, and then give your computer some time to calculate. All right, so this is our render here, and it's a pretty nice looking city flyover render with some nice specularity on the rooftops here from our sun. But let's finish off this quick video with some basic compositing tips to make it look even better. We'll go ahead and close the render window here, and then now we'll select our compositing tab. Select the use nodes option here so that we can see our node tree and start compositing. First, let's press shift A and add a new viewer output node so that we can see our results here. So we'll go ahead and connect our image output to this for now. To utilize our mist pass overlay, let's go ahead and press shift A again, and then add a mix node in between our image and our viewer output here. And now we will connect the mist pass output to the other image node in this mix node here. And now as you can see, we can adjust the factor value here to change the amount of mist we want to add on top of our city render. I'll go ahead and put this at a value of 0.017, but you can experiment with this to get a result that works for you. Let's go ahead and output our mist pass composite to our composite node as well, so it will be output in our file system effectively. And to top off our composite, let's go ahead and now add a sky background with some basic color correction. So we'll just press shift A here and we'll add an input node for an image. And now I will go ahead and find a sky photo that I have in my downloads folder here and select it. Now we will go ahead and press shift A and add an alpha over node here and connect our sky image as well as our city render input. This will be our new final output so we will go ahead and bring its output node to the viewer here. And we also need to flip these around here so let's do that really quick. And as you can see our background sky is a little bit too big for our render size so let's go ahead and fix that. We will press shift A again and add a scale node and then add it to our image input. And then we'll change its option here to render size. And now as you can see our background sky is scaled as it should be. Finally to bring our render together we can add some basic color correction. So let's go ahead and press shift A again and add a quick color balance node and play around with the wheels to get an interesting result. Of course there is a lot you can do in compositing but this is looking pretty nice here so we will finish here today. I will usually render out my projects with the OpenEXR file format with an alpha channel. So you can do that right here as well as choose the file output folder and the name for your render. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful to see one use of particle systems to create cool cities inside of Blender. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time.